Um, for me, I think we overcomplicate education and there are all sorts of pressures on us which force us to concentrate on achieving those goals and aims rather than concentrating on children. And I think schools and education, it's really simple actually. Our focus, our primary focus and our sole focus should be the children. Um, the goal at Stover is simply to take the child in terms of when they arrive with us, uh, who and what they are and what they've achieved to that point and try to, to project, uh, create a view of where they might end up uh, in terms of their own expected performance. Uh, and then what we try to do as a school is build on top of that expectation. So it's all about taking the child beyond where they might expect to, to, to be in terms of achievement. Um, that is crucial for me in that it forces, if that's the right word, encourages my staff to look at each child as an individual unique person. Because I think we, we, we're under grave danger of looking at amorphous groups of children who are all trying to achieve level 4B or are all trying to achieve a grade C and uh, uh, that's simply not true. There's no such thing as an average child. Uh, children shouldn't be judged against their peers or against a national statistic. They should be ju judged against their own potential. Um, so we work exclusively, uh, with my staff, I work exclusively on producing that above expectation performance. What's the school trying to achieve? Well, for me, I think there's two very distinct goals. Uh, of course, we, we, we have an eye on exam results. You know, they're important and they can't be ignored. Um, for me, that's the core of the apple, you know, but, but the person at the end of the process is equally and if not more important. And for me, that's the flesh of the apple. That's who and what they are when they leave us. Um, and that's things like, are they a good communicator? Are they going to walk into that first interview and go, good morning, this is who I am and this is what I'm all about. And yes, I've got a jolly good set of exam results for me within the context of my ability, but actually there's a whole raft of skills outside the letters on the page that I can bring to you as a company or indeed into a social setting that'll make me successful for the rest of my life. And those, you know, are, am I a team player? Can I communicate? Can I manage risk? Do I know what failure looks like? Can I deal with that? I think, I think again, schools sometimes are guilty of, of producing lots of ticks in, in lots of exercise books and actually life is often about dealing with uh, the times when we're not successful and learning from what went wrong and becoming a, a uh, more well-rounded person as a, as a consequence of that. Uh, are we creative? Are we innovative? Are we flexible? Are we robust? Do we have that lovely glow of self-belief at the centre of us. Not arrogance, you know, it can, it, we, can, we can tip that too far. Uh, but if it's self-belief, we go into any situation thinking we might have a chance of making a success of it. And it's, and it's crucial for me that my children leave with that sense of who and what they are. And as a school that we've genuinely grown those soft skills, as well as giving them, you know, an exam certificate that they can say, personally, I'm proud of what I've achieved in my examinations. So then the crucial question becomes, how, how, do you, how do you achieve the core of the apple and at the same time grow the person? Uh, and I think it's very easy for schools to say, well, we deal with the core of the apple, the academic performance in the classroom, and we, we deal with the, the whole person through our extracurricular program. Uh, I personally don't believe that works. Uh, I think we spend 60 to 70% of our time in school in classrooms. So if we're not growing and developing the individual from a holistic perspective in the classroom, we're, we're really paying lip service through the 20 or 30% of our curriculum that is extracurricular, that is the additional curriculum. Uh, now at Stover, we've, we've, we've uh, branded our curriculum um, as a research-based learning uh, curriculum. So we're a research-based learning school. And that means for me that learning is not about the teacher. The class, the focus of a classroom is not the teacher, the focus of the classroom is learning. Uh, to give you an example, a teacher can be fantastic in delivering Pythagoras, but if they're sat in front of three-year-olds, there's no learning happening. Um, so you can have fantastic teaching and zero learning, and the focus of the classroom has to be the learners. 
And learning is about doing and discovering and researching and finding out for yourself. Because that's when that learning really crystallizes in your, in your own mind. Um, so the research-based learning approach is all about having that umbrella philosophy over what we do in every single classroom across the school from 3 to 18. And by encouraging discovery and creativity and innovation, all of those soft skills that we talked about, problem solving, risk taking, failing, uh, uh, innovative, being innovative, being creative, uh, being flexible, being robust, you grow all of those skills in the classroom and then you embellish them and enhance them with your extracurricular programme. So the sport and the drama and the music and the debating and the computer programming adds to this already rapidly growing uh, individual uh, who has this lovely set of soft skills to offer. We work really, really hard at Stover on our pastoral care because good, good pastoral care equals happy children. And my belief is if we don't have happy children, we don't have children learning at 100% of their potential. You know, we're all animals at the end of the day and if there's something bothering us, if there's something on our mind, it may be the relationship with your peers, it may be the relationship you have with your, your teachers, it may be the fact that it's lumpy custard every Thursday and, you know, on Thursday morning, you just don't concentrate on your lessons quite as well as you might because part of your brain is distracted. Uh, so I don't want that. I want all of my children being able to dedicate 100% of themselves to learning. And I mean learning in the broadest sense. So, so the, the structure of the school is crucial to facilitating that happy learning environment. You know, we're very rural, we're, we're mixed, uh, co-educational, we're 3 to 18, we're 330 children in the school in total, which means those personal relationships are very close and the children are well known. Um, all of those facets make it easier to create a, a happy learning community. The school has a, a very transparent uh, scholarships and bursaries policy. Uh, so scholarships are a vehicle through which the school can uh, reward, attract um, particularly ta talented children in the sphere of academics or music or, or um, sport or the arts. Um, and that's about children coming into the school and, and providing uh, really healthy role models for the other children. It's about aspiration. Um, Bursaries are a completely different vehicle. Bursaries are about um, helping families to come to the school who otherwise might not quite be able to afford the fee. Uh, so bursaries are about the school being a charity and it's about making the school accessible to a much wider raft of, of families that might otherwise not be able to afford traditional independent education. Uh, the admissions process to the school is about the family and the child getting to know us as a school in, in the best possible way they can before they start. Because we'll be successful with that child if there's a good fit between the child and the school. Uh, so first part of the admissions process is that the family come and see me. Um, we'll have a, a good chat in my office. They can ask me anything they want to about the school. At that stage, it's a really nice time to talk about scholarships and bursaries if you want to know more about that. And then uh, the pupil or child in question must come for taster days. I want them to meet their peers. I want them to meet their teachers. I want them to skip out of that taster day with a big smile saying, Mummy, Daddy, when can I start? Um, and following on from that, uh, we have a, uh, I like to see a school report because that gives me a, a view of the child across an extended period of time. It's not written for the purpose of, of school transfer. It's simply a, a really nice window into who and what that child is all about. Uh, if everything at the end of that process is, is positive and the family want to start, then you register to secure your place. These are exciting times for the school. So during the last year, the school role has increased by over 60 pupils. That's fairly unusual in South Devon and Devon as a whole at the moment. Uh, so we're delighted. Um, the pupils are coming because we've, we've clearly defined a message. We've decided what we want to achieve with those pupils as a school. We've launched our research-based learning curriculum, which is exciting. Uh, we have completely redeveloped the Sixth Form Centre, we have a brand new art studio, um, the children are very excited about our 3D hands-on art tying into the research-based learning curriculum. Uh, where, where is the school going? Uh, it's certainly not about empire building. 
You know, we don't want a school of 1,200 children because we lose sight of the individual. So with the governors, we have a very defined plan in terms of what the school being full would look like, and that would be around about 400 pupils. And we feel that that gives us a perfect balance between the size of the school and being able to invest in the school's future, but also retaining that individuality, uh, knowing the children. If we lose that, then we lose who and what we are as a school. So my family are, are part of the school. Um, I have a son, Luke, who's in year five at the moment, and a daughter, Olivia, who's in year six. Uh, and the lovely thing for me as a head is they've just been embraced by the school. Uh, they're not the head's children. They're just another pair of Stover children in the prep with lots of friends, great relations with their teachers. Uh, and I think that's a really special feature of the school. Uh, it's, it's much cliched to say it's a family. Um, but my children, if they're an example, have come in from day one and both of them came back on day two and said, Daddy, Stover's a bit different because everybody's your friend. And I think that's a function of the fact that we, we accept uh, everybody into the school. We, do, we accept diversity. We're not selective pointedly on academics or on, on ambition or on sporting talent or, or, or on anything. If you've got something to offer the school, then we, we, we welcome you in. Uh, and that means when I look at my pupil cohort, that they are diverse. Uh, but we embrace that diversity. Being different is a positive here, because it's the people who are slightly different who change the world. And, and those are the people that we want to encourage. Those are the people that we want to grow and flourish. Uh, so so it's, 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 for my family, on a personal front, that's been really, really special. Uh, my wife's part of the school. So she joined the school um, in September 2015 as head of pastoral care. Her background is former sixth form tutor, a former head of pastoral care and a SEN lead um, in other independent schools, uh, also Manchester University admissions tutor. Uh, so, so very useful skills that she can bring um, to the school. Uh, and in a sense, with her leading pastoral care and me as head of the whole school, it really is a family looking after our family of 330 children. Uh, which is, is, is special. Um, we've moved to Devon, uh, so we've come down from the north of England. Uh, we, we, we like hills, we like mountains, um, we like being outdoors, uh, we have a couple of dogs, uh, we, we like skiing, we rock climb, um, we do a little bit of surfing, although we mainly spend our time falling off. Um, so, so Devon really is a, is a lovely fit for us. Um, there's everything here. Uh, from the beautiful mountains to the sea to, to the cosmopolitan little city of Exeter. Uh, so everything is available to us as a family um, and, and we'll be here for, for a long time. So accessing the school is, is no issue at all for day pupils. We're on the A38 corridor, which takes us straight into Exeter, straight down to Plymouth, uh, through the South Hams, uh, through South Dartmoor. Um, we have a network of buses that go in every direction, uh, 30 mile radius of the school and because of the nature of the school those buses can be flexible. If we have a new family who are slightly off bus route then talk to us and, and we'll try and accommodate you. Uh, for, for our borders um, we have the train station in Newton Abbott so obviously um, easy access in that respect. Uh, right through to London, um, a two to three hour commute from London by train. Uh, Exeter Airport for our international borders is 15 minutes from the school. And then obviously if you're flying into Heathrow, you're straight on the train and to the school in very quick time. So for our borders, um, Exeter Airport is 15 minutes away from the school. Bristol Airport is just over an hour from the school. If you're flying into Heathrow, then the school will uh, send a bus to pick up or it's hop on the train and in less than three hours you can be at the school. We're a school of 330 pupils at the moment and of that 330, we have between 60 and 70 borders. So that balance is really important for us. We're not a boarding school per se. We're a day school that has a couple of boarding houses. And I think that has real advantages for both the day pupils and the boarders. For the boarders, they're truly immersing themselves in an English day school. Uh, so it's about setting them up with best advantage to learn the language, because they do that in an accelerated fashion if they're socializing and mixing with English day pupils, if ultimately their friends are our English day pupils. And that's what we see happening. 
for our day pupils, there's a lovely opportunity then to have a little window on global culture because our children are going to leave us and, and, and operate in a global marketplace. And for our Devon day children, it's crucial for them that they're learning about different cultures as well. So it works in a positive respect from both perspectives. Uh, with the boarding house, we, we work really hard to have a balance of different, different nationalities. So we recruit from uh, Western Europe, we recruit from Eastern Europe, we recruit from Africa, we recruit from uh, the Middle East, and we recruit from the Far East. Uh, and we're working on uh, opening up the South American market. Uh, and we're, we're very conscious of our ratios in respect of, of the number of children who come from a particular country. Uh, because again, with our boarding house, we want that English presence. We want our UK boarders to mix with a diverse range of children from all sorts of different nationalities and countries. Uh, because then we get a lovely melting pot uh, and, and we get real friendships and definitely the predominant language is English. And that's crucial for our boarders in terms of what they come to the UK for. Yes, a fantastic UK education, but also to improve their language and knowledge of the English culture. And that's what they'll use when they go into their, into their business lives and, and the rest of their lives. Um, so we, we, we consciously set up our boarding provision um, and we talk with our, our housemistress and housemaster about having a boarding home, not a boarding house. And I know it's semantics, but, but I want them, the children, the boarders, when they finish their school day, to feel like they're going home in as much as they possibly can. Um, so our activities following the school day, uh, the boarders will go back onto the house and have a little bit of downtime, like they would if they were going home. You know, they've had a jolly hard school day. They finish at five o'clock and they just need half an hour, 40 minutes to relax, like my children do when they come home to me. And then it's into meal times and our, our meals are award winning. We're, we're, we're blessed to have a, an award winning chef who runs our kitchen facility. So, so the meals are, are lovely, um, especially the, the puddings, which are a little bit too nice at times. Uh, and then after, after meal time, our boarders will go into uh, um, a prep session. So again, as they would at home, it will be homework. Uh, with, with the parents overseeing that homework. So it's very much that the house parents are dipping in and out and supporting those children through their prep time. Uh, and then it, every evening there will then be a boarders activity which runs from about eight o'clock in the evening to, to, to nine o'clock. Uh, and that could be a basketball session on one of the courts, it could be a table tennis session, uh, it could be movie night. Um, it's, again, we set up a, a, a social side to the boarding house so we have open house where the girls' house one night a week will mix with the boys' house and vice versa because that's about them socialising and growing into fully functional young people. Um, so the provision over the weekends for, for boarding students is, is very definitely that one of the days is an off-site experience. So sometimes that will be cultural. So a trip to Bath to see, to see the Roman baths or a trip to Bristol. Uh, or, or one of the local castles. We're blessed in Devon in having a whole wealth of local history, um, castles, monuments, uh, all sorts of things have happened in Devon. And we like our students to have an appreciation of that. Sometimes it might be further afield. So we might take the group to London for the day uh, and we can see the sites over there, jump on the train and, and, and access all that London has to offer. Uh, on other occasions at the weekend, it'll be a little bit more relaxed and it might be some shopping or it might be a sporting trip to, to see Exeter Chiefs who are our local Premiership rugby team playing one of their fixtures.